Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I fucking hate starting this. It's always awkward to start videos because yeah. it's just not us. We, we cold open everything, so I know. having an actual open is I know. weird. Okay, so start over. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Kellen, this is Emily. And today we're gonna do five dollar therapy on our YouTube channel. If you didn't know, we also did five dollar therapy the other day on our podcast, like what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Yeah, something like so that. So you can also go check out that episode. But we actually had more questions from you guys, mm -hmm. so we figured we'd put it into a YouTube video and you guys get them answered over here. This is time for some five dollar therapy, aka therapy dupe. This person says, How to not get discouraged when you don't have friends? Well, that's currently Emily and I. This is hard because like, I feel like I could sit here and be like, oh, it's fine, it's easy, like just keep trucking. But like, honestly, like it is discouraging. And like, I feel that. I think also like you have to think about like, especially with life in general is like, it's not linear. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're always just moving forward and you can't go back. But I think a lot of times we think about shit in the past, like when we had like a larger group of friends or we had like, more people or we just had like we still don't have a lot of people but we had like a consistent group like mm -hmm. realistically like that's just not how it's always going to be and like there's going to be times in your life where you are going to be like really lonely and like not have a huge support system or whatever that is but everybody goes through that and i think the people who don't are either lying or they just are like probably not growing or maturing. My thing is, is like, like that's the person you're gonna see when they're 45 and yeah. lonely and they don't know what to do with their life because right. they've avoided everything their whole life. And I hate to put it that way, but I really feel like that's true. And typically in most men, I also hate to group, mm -hmm. but it's true. And like, I think it's okay to grow and figure out what you want and get your shit together because also at the end of the day, no one's gonna help you but you. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to be lonely. Like she was saying, like, it's not linear. And I like, Looking back to like in college, I had a group of friends. I was on a swim team. Like I had a massive group of people. Like you were in a sorority, you had a group of people. Regardless, but I still felt lonely. Regardless if you loved all of them or yeah, not, yeah. you still had a group of people. You always had things to do. You always had functions to be at. Like you always felt like you were like social. Totally. But like at the end of the day, when I look back at that, I still really only had like one or two friends, even though I had a group of people around me. Mm -hmm. So like, even though now I don't have a group of people, I still only have like one or two friends. So what's different? Mm -hmm. Literally not. And like, so yeah, I say like, it's okay to be discouraged, but I think ways to cope with that is like, find things that you love. Mm -hmm. I love hobbies. I'm learning the guitar right now. I trained for a marathon. Like Kellen loves going to the gym. Oh, nutrition, she's very into tattoos. Like whatever that is, it's like find your thing that you like and start not pouring your time into that, but like at least keeping your mind busy with things like that can help. And also I feel like in a in this time where you are alone and whatever, take advantage of that because there's going to be a point in your life when like you are going to be surrounded by whether that be your kids, your spouse, your people at your job, something where you're gonna just want that time mm -hmm. where you where you had that alone in that peace you're of gonna mind. Miss that. Exactly. So like it might feel discouraging or whatever now, but like take advantage of it. This one just says friendship breakups. So we actually have a podcast episode called Friendship Breakups. You guys can go listen to Send it. To the pod. Yeah, go to the podcast. I'm telling you, like we go way, way, way more in depth than we're going to here. So if you really want sound advice, go to our podcast. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, and go to scroll down mm, the French yeah. breakup. We can link it also in the description. I'll link it. Next <laughs> one. What to do after getting out of an on slash off relationship for the first time being single since 18. I'm 24 now. Okay. <laughs> so Emily and I don't have great advice for this because we are single people. Chronic, and, chronically single. And also, I don't think either one of us are like high school sweetheart type people. No, we've never actively had an on again, off again relationship. Oh, that's a good point. Like I've also never had that. Like I've either been in a relationship or I'm out of a relationship. I've had situationships, but like, that's just a whole different scenario. Yeah. I don't think, okay, so this is, I think, going back to like, feeling like alone, like the previous question, I think pouring yourself, pouring your time and yourself yeah, into finding that. you, doing things that make you happy. Like honestly, after that long of a relationship, I feel like you need to find yourself again. Like I was gonna say, yeah, you probably are like associating 
you and who you are with this relationship. Yeah. So probably right now, I would assume that you're feeling like lost and like maybe like missing meaning to like yeah. your next couple of steps. I feel like you probably don't know what you actually like, what your actual favorite color is, what you, where you enjoyed eating, what you enjoy doing in your free time because all of that was consumed by your relationship. Especially if it was on and off. Yeah. It was probably this constant feeling of like, like walking on eggshells or being like, oh, I must be this person to like keep this person. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I would just say like, go do shit that like maybe you didn't do or like that you didn't- Wanted to try. Yeah. You never thought you'd be able to do because of having a person. Mm -hmm. Go travel, go, go to therapy. That's also a great one. And this might be toxic advice, but that's why I'm the professional. Um, go on, download a dating app. Start scrolling. A, the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna say, oh shit, there's just a bunch of uggos on here. Maybe I should get back with that other person. But then you're you're gonna realize really quickly that like men are not uggo. shit. And mm -hmm. then the person that you were with is also not shit. And like, it, it's gonna create, this is what I call- Toxic to Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, but, <laughs> but, but also it's, this is what I'm gonna call like shock therapy. Cause you're gonna realize like, oh, I think all men are just gross. And then you're gonna develop a hatred for dating and you're gonna love being single. Okay, so that's one way to do it. If you wanna do it in a- It's more like trauma therapy. Yeah, so that's one way to do it. The healthier way to do it would be like literally just pouring into yourself, no matter what that means to you. Do the things that you didn't do because maybe you were too scared to, or maybe this person was like holding you back or whatever. This is actually an okay thing to do 100% of the time is like still cry to yourself, yeah. still be upset, still wish it would have been different because you had a whole other perspective in your head of like how it's gonna turn out and that's okay. It's okay to be sad, it's okay to grieve. It doesn't matter in three months if you still cry over something because who gives a fuck? But Also like, the relationships that I feel like were the most like toxic and just this wishy-washy, yeah. you're probably gonna it's like- the hardest to get over. Because the highs were really high. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's gonna be a long time of probably feeling like, oh, we should have made it work and whatever. But like, that's just the highs telling you that it was good. But like, don't forget also about the shitty stuff. Okay, this is <laughs> I'm craving a major life change, but I'm broke, LMAO. Any suggestions? Same. Uh, goodwill. <laughs> Honestly, like go to Goodwill, walk around Goodwill, look at all of the different aesthetics from 1965 to 2004, because that's about as that's where the fashion kind of ends there. Realize that all of this stuff you can buy and make something out of it, and like it doesn't have to be super expensive, but you're also just not gonna be the Pinterest girly. I think that's something that I had to realize too, like being broke you're broke. Like, and I, I hate to be like negative about it, but like, it's just not gonna be the Amazon influencer, like TikTok clean girl, like whatever. And like, there are ways to change your life and your aesthetic and whatever. It's just gonna look differently on everybody. And like, I feel like a good place to start is like, go to, go to thrift stores, go to like cheap places and find like little things that you like, but also like, I don't know. It's okay to not have like all the shiny new stuff. Also, okay, also if you're thinking like a life change not in your aesthetic and like you're like, I want to move, I want to go do this, mm -hmm. I want to go travel, I want to go whatever. There's like, maybe moving if you're broke isn't Bad necessarily idea. a great idea because it's really expensive to move. Mm -hmm. um, but what I could say is if you're trying to move to a new place, one, find a job before you go. Whether that's like serving, bartending in your actual field, um, being, I don't know, go find a job there in that place and make sure you actually have an income there. Go find Facebook groups. Like here, there's a Nashville girls group. You could go on there and see people are looking for roommates to try to find like I was gonna a say, room to rent. Find a, a group of women. Yeah. I would stress that more than anything, especially if you're trying to move and go somewhere. A, don't do it with a man. Mm -mm. Because A, it's scary. And B, like you don't want to just have to like what happens if it doesn't work out and yeah, now you're yeah. on your own? So yeah, like here we have the Nashville Girls Group and there's people posting there all the time like, hey, me and my four friends are renting a five bedroom house and we have mm -hmm. a room for rent that's $600 a month plus utilities. Like you could, I wouldn't say easily be able to do that, but you could probably easily do that and move and be in a new place. And have um, like a job that's like not the crazy highest paying. Exactly. Yeah. So something like that, if you're trying to like uproot your life, if you're trying to like, be a vacation girly and like whatever, like 
there's cheap places you can travel to and like if you have a car start my maybe driving to like the next say, town over a trip like go to the next town over like go do it safely don't be like staying in like air, like motels by yourself that's a little freaky but like you could go do stuff like that um i don't know honestly it's hard being broke and like wanting to do stuff because in the reality is like life is expensive also like, like if yeah. there's a job or something that you've like wanted to do like one thing for like me and emily especially this past two years is like just fucking do it like if you want to be especially if you're in your 20s and you don't have any like commitment to like per people you're taking care of like yeah. just do it now like if you love if you okay if you're gonna be like emily and go to goodwill and find a bunch of cool clothing and piece things together and you really want to get into like being a tiktok girl like, get ready with me start doing it mm -hmm. just start posting it and I'm not one to tell you that because I'm really bad at posting on my TikTok. <laughs> but if that's what if that's your aspiration, but your you goal to start doing do it. You do post your whole life online. Yeah. In Even a different though it's way. not through like your personal account, mm -hmm. you still do. So like, yeah, just take the risk, just do it. Like YOLO. I'm to a new city with my husband and I'm having trouble making friends my age. That's tough. One thing I would say for this is like us, Nashville Girls Group on Facebook find your local like facebook girly group and just literally post on there because girls do it every single day i was gonna there. say it's not like a unique experience we're no. all especially at this point in our life like young people moving to a new city like everybody's in the same boat that you are and nobody's gonna think you're a weirdo for like trying to make friends. no because the amount of people that post in the national girls group saying hey like i just moved here with my boyfriend i'm having trouble making friends i'm here with my husband or like uh, I'm a mom with two kids. I'm like all like whatever your scenario is, and the amount of women that like minimum a hundred people will respond and be like, let's say, grab coffee, let's have a day to go out, and like honestly, a lot of them do meet up and hang yeah. out. So that would be my sound advice for being in a new city with your husband. Literally, you could also go on there and just be like, hey, me and my husband are looking for other couples like to go grab date. dinner yeah. with, like yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. And then like he can have a friend that now they can go golfing or whatever together, and then mm -hmm. you have a girl you can go get your nails on with, like. That would be my advice. Yeah. How do I talk to my boyfriend about his lack of respect for his mom? He's always blowing her off. You don't and you leave. I'm sorry, yeah. but you cannot teach a man to love his own fucking mother. No. That is one thing that I've learned because- So, yeah, there's two, there's two, it's twofold. He's never gonna respect you also. It's twofold. Sorry. If his mom isn't the problem, then he is. But, yeah. But if his mom is the problem, because that is also the Still case- Still leave. I, well, you never know. She's never gonna like you though. Like if the mom is like that. No, but I'm saying like, if the mom has created a lot of trauma in his life for like the other kids, it would be mm -hmm. obvious if it was also the other kids. Right. Like there's also a difference. Maybe you need to understand why he isn't respecting his mom and blowing her off. But if you already know and he's just kind of being a dick, then you gotta go because he will never respect you. Okay, I'm about to graduate nuclear medicine school in august am i stupid that's what that says right nuclear medicine school in august and i'm stressed about finding a job we have to be stupid because um, let me tell you that nuclear medical school they medicine school you are nuclear medicine school but she's smarter than us i know that's why i'm googling it first of all bitch was this just a flex number bitch, one bitch we to google what that was number one um not to like bring us down a peg she's a waitress at a restaurant and i do mark I, do, I post social media posts for a living so like we're not on the same level as you and i don't think we're the ones to give you career advice we will yeah we're not the career advice people but i will say I'm stressed about my i feel like it's a very niche position um, I would say that too. Yeah, there's probably not a ton of other. I feel people like it's a very niche qualified to yes. do this kind of work. So one that sets you in a part, and you're on like a good trajectory because yes. like I'm assuming this is probably a field that's always going to need people to work it. Yeah. Also, have you had an internship? Because coming out of school, <laughs> I don't know. Do you need one? <laughs> do you have to have like certain medical hours? I don't know. I think you're just gonna be just fine. I think you're gonna do great. I think you are going to be I think you don't need five dollar therapy. I think, yeah, you're gonna be the change the that change we need. The change in the world. And hopefully one day when we all are ridden with illness because of how horrible this world is. You, you won't can, be. You can cure us and take care of us. Yeah, hon, I, <laughs> because. Because I'm a waitress and she posts social media. I we do, have no I advice. do Instagram. <laughs> And I'm not very good at it, so, okay. <laughs> Tips on getting over your toxic ex. Fuck a new man. 
fuck a woman. Honestly, like, yeah, having sex with people. That's so toxic advice. I don't know. Yeah, fuck some randos. Like, honestly. Yeah, honestly, the how I got over my toxic ass was like, fucked a couple people, went to therapy. No, actually, wrong order. Fucked a couple people, traveled the world, went to therapy. Yeah. So, so I, I avoided for a while, and then I said, oh, help. With the last one. We have a long email. So the gist of this is this girl and her friend had been close for a really long time and like throughout their whole friendship, her friend had always talked about like wanting to be a mom and like start a family, blah, blah, blah. And so when she got pregnant, like she was really excited for her friend. And basically the person who was pregnant was always complaining about people in her life, like coming in when it was convenient for them and like popping in and out of her life and whatever. And then the f person who emailed us was saying how like, even though she was like really excited for her friend or whatever, she's like a small business owner. So it required her to like travel a lot and like be really busy. And so she really tried to put effort in the friendship because she didn't want to be the type of friend that this girl was always talking about. Like the people who came in when it was convenient for them, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fast forward. The girl has the baby and she's like trying to be around more often, but also is busy because like we all are and we get that. The friend had a barbecue, invited a bunch of people over and she ended up staying and cleaning and picking up. And afterwards, like, I don't know if it was the same day or like later, mm -hmm. the girl who was, had the baby ended up texting her and was like, I'm just so annoyed with this friendship. Like, I feel like you don't try and like blah, blah, blah. And like, I need to distance myself from you and all this stuff. But then the girl was just confused because she feels like she's been the only one ever putting in effort. So she's like, basically like, I just don't really know what to do. I think your friend is very selfish, self absorbed, narcissistic. Yeah. And I, uh, there's people in your life that you're going to come across and you just, you can't ever force them to change or to understand your side. Like it's never going to yeah. happen. You might feel like you were doing everything, but sometimes like it's just they might have a different like expectation than you have and mm -hmm. like even though you've talked about it or whatever like it doesn't make either one of you like the quote bad person mm -hmm. but like it's just not gonna work because well it's, no it's actually so true because even like in relationships like trying to figure out your partner's love language and to your love language is different. Like Emily loves to give gifts. Mm -hmm. So like that's the way that she shows her love. And subconsciously that's the way that she yeah. likes to receive it. But also has to understand like the person you're with just like giving gifts might not be their thing. It might be mm -hmm. like acts of service. It might be like words of affirmation. And like you have to understand that that's okay to accept that that's how they love you. But that's hard because like you're not receiving love how you would give it right so then it feels like they're not doing enough and you're doing a lot where in reality it's like you just might not be on the same like and love language goes into friendships too that's what i was gonna say so it's like it is a thing um i would say that she has a lot of growing up to do just because you have a child does not mean you're grown um and i think that she has to grow up and she's gonna learn it the hard way when she gets everybody out of her life and has actually has nobody and it's going to be a sad day for her and her child to grow up without family and friends around them to love and support them. But that's something that she chose and you can't. It's not your fault. You can't stop your life for somebody who, do, who will never stop their life for you. Right. So I think you should just keep growing your business. Keep doing your, what you love to do because it's your life too. And something about life is you literally only have one. So yeah. do what makes you happy. And if she doesn't bring happiness, bye. Yeah. That's what I have to say. That's our $5 therapy. And thank you guys for watching another YouTube video with Society 97. Um, we also do the video version of the podcast every single Friday. So mm -hmm. check that out and we'll talk to you guys later. Okay, bye. Bye.